guys, congratulations on this. It's so good. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Tony, I saw that you just posted a picture with Mr. Eastwood. What was it like? What was the experience like working with him? Oh, I, I mean, I still pinch myself. I can't believe I had the opportunity to get to know him and work with him and just be on set with him. Um, he's an incredible person, an incredible artist, and being directed by him is an honour, actually. Um, the vibe on set is so easygoing. He's, he just simplifies everything to the truest form, uh, and he... He hires people that he really trusts. He's worked with some crew members have worked with him for decades. Uh, so there's just such a comfortable atmosphere on set where you don't feel threatened by the fact that you might only have one take. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, no, you can go again. You can ask. Sometimes he'll deny it if he thinks he's got it, but generally he's very flexible. Um, but it was just a really special experience. I'm still overwhelmed and can't believe that he invited me to be a part of it. Uh, how about you, Nicholas? How was the experience for you? I mean, yeah, all the things that Tony said, an absolute dream come true. I mean, I, I you know, loving cinema and just being part of the, the world that watches films, I was like blown away. First of all, when my agents called and said that, oh, Clint Eastwood wants to speak to you, I was like, this, this just has to be a mistake. How does he know who I am? What's happening here? Is this, is this some sort of a, a sick prank that my agents are playing on me? Um, just because, you know, all, all, every performance he's given, but then all, of course, all the movies he's directed that are so iconic in every way, he's, he's just such a huge part of cinema. And so to get to the, to spend time with him as a person and, and learn and watch how he crafts the stories he does, but also the, the community and the person he is behind the scenes and how he values people and their contribution and trusts them and gives them the space to explore and create. It's just, he's an incredibly special person with a, with a, a sick and funny wit. Um, there's just- Oh a, really? He's got a, he's got a sick, he's had, <laughs> notice you said sick and funny. Wit twisted, he's, he's, he's <laughs> very funny. Um, he's got a great sense of humor and, and charm to him and he really values and cares for people. So it's, it's, it's special to spend time with him. Wow, sounds very special. Tony, what was it about this tale that intrigued you? Ah, well, it's a moral tale. It's about people <clears throat> making choices that they can live with that potentially benefit others or potentially benefit themselves and weighing mm. up the options in life and how things might move beyond making these difficult decisions. I mean, I honestly, the script could have been dog it I would have done it <laughs> I love Clint so much <laughs> thankfully it's the most incredible story um and I've never played a lawyer before I I play a person who's so forthright and clear and has such strong opinions and is really such a truth seeker and is all about justice who then has to kind of shift a bit as things unfold mm -hmm. and playing with that was fun um but um, honestly, just just working with Clint, and also I did know that Nick was doing it, and we'd all, all we'd worked with each other obviously a couple of decades ago, and to have the opportunity to work with him as a grown man now that was really very special to me. Um, and uh, just watching him work and how he's evolved as an actor really blew me away. I felt so proud, and I felt like what an opportunity. You don't. There are some. It's kind of rare that you get to work with someone again. So to have this opportunity was just really special, I have to say. And Nicholas, how was that for you to be reunited with Tony? Oh, I was I was thrilled. I mean, getting to work with Tony as as a kid when I was eleven. I mean, she just set such a wonderful example for me then, and took such great care of me. But in those intermittent years, I've just become such a fan of her as an artist. Like I watch you in movies, and I'm like. And even sometimes I'll be scrolling through Twitter and stuff and there'll be like great performances and there'll be a clip of you from Hereditary and stuff. And I'll watch that just like that clip and I'll be like, whoa, I'm like that is some acting. Whoa. I'm like, go, go, go. <laughs> and I'm like, so it's just so special to get to like, because I feel like we've got a deep connection and bond from all those years ago. But yeah. then also like, you know, now as adults getting to work together and just appreciate like the light and joy she brings into the world as well, because she's such a wonderful person to be around. So oh. wonderful things. Tony, that's so sweet. And 
Um, what moral questions did this raise for you, Nick, playing this part? I think that was the fascinating thing. And from the first moments of speaking to Clement, you know, this kind of this moral tale that hopefully the audience will really get swept up in because we all have those moments where you, we know technically the right thing to do, but perhaps it's not the easiest thing for us. And that can be on a small scale or, or a large scale. Um, and this is obviously on, on the largest possible scale in many ways where it's like, OK, you, you've made this mistake. You've, you've you kind of crafted this beautiful life for yourself. But now suddenly this mistake you didn't even realize you made is now coming back to haunt you. And, and is there a way to get out of it unscathed? But can you also live with that? Can, when, you know, when you lay your head on the pillow at the end of the night, what's your conscience saying about what you've done to someone else's life? So I think that's just an interesting part of human nature. And, and, and I think my character is stuck between you know, a rock and a hard place in many ways because he's, he's trapped completely in this, in this, in this movie. And um, hopefully it's someone that the audience can kind of project onto and, and, then, and then sit there with their, with their own opinions of what they should do and what could they have done the right thing. Absolutely. It really is thrilling. For, some, for a story that's so, like, human, mm. it actually gets your heart pumping. It really does. The story does. Like, I know what the story is. I know yeah. what's going to happen. It, when I was watching it, I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I really was. You I do find get that difficult about watching movies that I'm in because I'm like, I know what's going to happen. So I'm always like, oh, well, I know this and I know that. And I'm like, it's really difficult for me to watch them without knowing. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it I does make sense. I'm yeah. a terrible viewer of my own films. And has this made it, you look at trials totally differently now, like when you're looking, say something like the Menendez case, like courtroom and trials, do you look at things differently now you've done this? Look, I think that the judicial system is the best construct that there is to make decisions about people who have done bad things or not, <laughs> um, but it's full of human error. And it's so technical, actually. That's the bit that gets me, you know. It, um, I, I, I just, we are flawed as humans. And so it's never gonna be completely right. And it, it just isn't. Uh, we would like to trust it and we would like to, you know, hope that it would do good for everybody, but it's, it's a flawed system.